Hey guys, Greg here. This edition of the Vinyl Rundown is a contest entry for Mason at MM's Vinyl. And I usually don't like doing contests late in the game. I've been too busy. We're only a couple days late from the deadline. But I thought Mason is such a cool young man and his channel is so good. I want to support the young music listener and vinyl collector any way I can. So that's why I'm coming with a last minute uh, entry on this. So let's see. I got his list of goodies here. Number one is your favorite jazz fusion record. This ties into the music we're listening to now. <clears throat> I'm a big jazz fan, but when I was in high school, I was just getting into jazz. Here's a record that I don't think anybody's ever shown on the vinyl community. The Yellow Jackets. Uh, very slick produced jazz fusion and uh, probably wasn't a, a big hit with critics but definitely was a big hit with musicians especially studio musicians and uh, kind of working jazz musicians <clears throat> the real reason I'm into this record is what you're hearing back there the blues guitar playing of Robert Robin Ford Robin Ford is an amazing amazing blues guitar player he hasn't really been in a band that's had like big hits and stuff this might be one of his best-selling records. Uh, he's a blues guy. He did a few years, maybe a decade in jazz. Went back to blues. What you're hearing back here is a live concert that really is more representative of his blues playing. But the playing on this is absolutely blisteringly amazing. All the players are great. Um, Ernie Watts is on here, and Russell Fronte on keyboards. Jimmy Haslip, who I met once. Um, I've seen this for a buck many times at thrift stores. Check it out. So, oh, by the way, Robin Ford, early blues record when he was with the Charles Ford band. That's Charlie Musselwhite on, uh, no, is that not Charles Musselwhite? I guess Charlie Musselwhite was a different band. I'm confused. <clears throat> this is on Arhuli, one of the labels that does a lot of uh, uh, blues and folk music. And... Charlie Musselwhite is not on here? Okay, guys named Ford are on here, the harmonica player. I think there's a, I think I got a Charlie Musselwhite record. Anyway, look how young Robin Ford is there. This is way back in 72, 1972. Okay, so jazz, fusion, blues, <clears throat> but we're going into what is my favorite blues rock album and the album that got me totally into wanting to become a guitar player was this and related records by Eric Clapton Layla I should have taken the cover off this so you can see the inside oh shoot the cover yeah 19 what is it 71 72 70 Layla double record set Eric Clapton Derek and the Dominoes Dwayne Allman on slide guitar and there's the Dominoes. It's not Derek, it's Eric. He changed the name to Derek so it didn't seem like an Eric Clapton project. But I was totally nuts and crazy about star, uh, Sunburst Fender Stratocasters. And right after this I got myself a 72 Fender Strat, which I no longer have and I'm very unhappy. <laughs> I have a lot of regrets of that. Uh, let's see. My skatefold. And of course the song Layla, everybody knows, hopefully. Um, Little Wing, which is a really interesting take on the Hendrix tune, very unique. Bell Bottom Blues, one of my favorites. Nobody Knows When You're Down and Out is a blues standard. Uh, Have You Ever Loved a Woman is a blues standard. Key to the Highway is a blues standard. So, great collection of blues and blues rock and blues guitar playing. And I guess there's some good... Uh, Piano and organ on here by Bobby Whitlock. So, huge influence on me when I was a youngster. Blues and blues rock. What else we got? What about an underground record? I'm going to turn Robin Ford down. Robin Ford is a fantastic blues player and jazz player. His singing and songwriting, yeah, they're, they're okay. But as a blues player, amazing. Um, Check out his other concerts on YouTube. I saw him a couple years ago. Him and Michael Landau, who's a monster uh, guitar player, and Gary Novak on drums. Check out those 
those concerts if you want to get in some Robin Ford. Okay, who else we got? Underground. I didn't bring all the records. Okay, here's one. This is a band of guys that I was friends with back in the 90s. Some of them used to work with me at Phillips Polygram. Slug. This is on Matador Records, 1994. Underground in the sense that they're very raw, industrial, noisy, very noisy, and very few people have heard of them. And I'm just friends with them all. I would hang out with them, go out with them, they'd come over to my house, go swimming. And we were all buddies back then. That was 20 plus years ago. Slug the Outsound. I, got, I had another record of theirs I wanted to show, and I forgot to bring it out. But uh, the Industrial Underground noise band scene of Los Angeles. I guess those days are long gone, right? Oh, another underground. This because nobody's heard of him. Or not too many people know about this guy. Spooky Rubin. Really talented singer, songwriter. Very unique uh, production values he puts into his records. I bought this having no idea what it was. I just thought the cover was so bizarre. I had to buy it at a used record store. Turns out he's a really good singer, songwriter. I think he's from L.A. I think he plays at uh, places like Largo once in a while. Uh, check this out online if you can get to it. Terra Magnifica, Crystal Cradle. These days are old. Welcome to the House of Food. Quirky, funny, unique. Spooky Reuben. Anybody out there know Spooky Reuben? Let me know. He, he deserves more. He deserves more recognition. These guys... Haven't been a band for a long time. They're not going to get any more recognition. What's a, a record that puts me in a good mood? I'm known as a person who's rarely in a good mood. I'm changing the lighting in here. What do you think of... Uh, darker? Lighter? That's alright. Uh, I showed this record yesterday. I did a whole video on this. And when I came to this contest, I could not figure out something that put me in a good mood. My son and I were talking about this, and he like had fond memories of laughing around and joking around to this when he was little. So that puts me in a good mood. Something you can enjoy with your kids and it's just good fun. Serenade to the Poodle. Hilarious, funny song. Uh, Babalu Aruni. Chicken Rhythm. Potato Chips. That's a hilarious tune. And Meshuggah Mondo, Mon, Mambo. Meshuggah Mambo. What I forgot to tell you guys yesterday when I did a video on this artist Slim Gaylord. Did I mention this is Slim Gaylord? And most of this stuff was from 78 RPM in the 40s. Re-released on Verve. What I forgot to mention yesterday, I talked all about the great cover art by David Stone Martin. I forgot to mention the other artists featured on here. Comic book artists. And uh, they reprinted it here on the, uh, on the CD. But there is actually an entire comic book in here by one of the most famous, famous comic book duos, Harvey Picard and Joe Sacco. Harvey Picard was the uh, subject of a film called American Splendor. He's just a neurotic, weird dude and who played him. Paul Giamatti played him. But they did a whole comic book just for this re-release, which I think is really cool, telling the story of Slim Gaylord. Uh, not only did he do instrumental satire, but he also uh, parodied Count Basie on his work Groove Juice Symphony, which is a record I showed yesterday. There's little vignettes from the career of Slim Gaylord, so fun packaging, fun comic strip, fun music, funny lyrics. How could he be in a bad mood? Nothing serious on here. It's, everything on here is hilarious. Okay, what's next? That's the record that puts me in a good mood. My favorite thing about record collecting. Record collecting has like been my life for a long time. Um, I don't know if you have heard the story about... I used to work at... I started working at a record store in 1984, my second record store in North Hollywood, California. Very, very cool location. There were a lot of musicians who worked there. We were right down the street from the famous Palomino Club uh, in North Hollywood, which has been in the news lately and not too far from Nudie's uh, Outfitter, and not too far from, uh, what was the other place? Filthy McNasty's Club FM Station I used to play at. Anyway, 
what I was trying to say is, what do I love about record collecting? Bringing me closer to people, meeting people. So when I worked at that record store, I met the, the young lady, the beautiful young lady, who is still right down the hallway. My wife. I've been with her for 30 plus years. And our house is two giant record collections under one roof. They're not completely interspersed. We got her alternative rock and my classical rock, but collecting records and going to record stores and thrift shops and antique stores, that was what we did when we were younger. That was just our thing. We would just hang out in record stores and bring home lots of records. So we got tons of records from that era. We're still, you know, enjoying record collecting hobby together. And now we have a son who's in college and he likes records. He has his own record collection. He plays instruments. He has his own taste. And I also like, you know, hanging with the young folks like Mason and helping younger generation get into records. I've, I've bought record players, given them to young folks along with stacks of records to help get them into the hobby. If you're listening to old cool vinyl records instead of what's on the radio today, you probably have pretty good taste in music. So that kind of connects, you know, this whole thing. And if you watch Mason, you know that he loves Santana. He's, he's got me to some Santana albums that I really didn't know that well. fusion -ear stuff. And, uh, of course, what am I getting into more and more? I've gone very deep in jazz the last uh, six months or so. I've gone very deep into some classical stuff, Bach. And, uh, I don't know, I'm just, I'm listening to all... When I say I'm listening to all kinds of stuff, I'm listening to the same stuff I always listen to, but learning more about jazz especially. And uh, I think that's all I have to say, and congratulations again to Mason. This was his 100 subscriber uh, contest. He's at 190 today, and this contest is over in a couple days. So congratulations to Mason, and glad to see the young generation appreciating the vinyl. And check out Robin for Mason please. All right, guys. Thank you for watching. Have a great week.